Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has taken aim at Korea, saying Seoul does not understand Tokyo's sentiments on a statue that was recently installed outside the Japanese consulate in the southern Korean city of Busan. The statue, much like the one in Glendale, represents a former victim of Japan's wartime sexual slavery and it's marked anger in Tokyo, leading it to withdraw not only its ambassador but another top-level diplomat. It's been over two months and counting now, but there's still no news of their return. To delve deeper into where this rocky relationship actually might be headed, our O. C. Young fired this report from Tokyo. Diplomatic relations between Korea and Japan remain in deadlock. After Japan pulled out its ambassador to South Korea and the Busan Consul General in early January, the temporary withdrawal was ordered by Tokyo after civic activists erected a statue outside the Japanese consulate in Busan, Korea's second largest city. Tokyo claims that the statue, a girl that represents the victims of Japan's wartime sex slavery program, violates the landmark agreement it reached with Seoul in December 2015, with which the two governments promised the so-called comfort women issue would be finally and irreversibly resolved. Korea is also crying foul. Japanese politicians continue to make provocative remarks. And last week, Japanese high school textbooks were found to have omitted historical facts about the issue, in addition to marking the Korean islets of Tokdo as their own. This has further incensed civic groups, which believe the agreement failed to reflect the wishes of the victims themselves. It's been almost three months since the Japanese envoys were recalled. Will Korea and Japan break out of this predicament and get their relationship back on track? Without an ambassador to consult at the Japanese embassy, I headed to Tokyo to get some answers. The first call I made was to the Japanese foreign ministry. Um, I wanted to inquire about when the Japanese ambassador to South Korea will be returning to his position. So, please ask a call or a call to uh, Korean embassy, please. But it's a very no. simple question. Can't I Sorry. just get an answer? Can I have a uh, call you back? Thank you very much. I've contacted Japan's foreign ministry several times, but it refused to give me an interview or a date when the Japanese ambassador and the consulate will return to Korea. It simply said it's in the process of reviewing the decision. Next, I turn to some experts for their views. Japan is very concerned. It's unsure of what to do right now before Korea appoints a new president. It seems there's nothing it can do, because any negotiation that's undertaken now may be of no use at all with the incoming administration. <laughs> we are probably not wanting any kind of revision, while we are afraid that Korean political, domestic political situation is going somewhere the other way. You will have presidential election, and most of the main candidates are saying that they will review or abolish the agreement. But experts <laughs> worry that keeping the ambassador's seat vacant for too long could worsen relations even further. The presidential term begins immediately after the election without a transition. So if there's no ambassador to consult with and they can't build a relationship with the winning candidate, bilateral relations could suffer. Experts say Korea and Japan must move forward together against all odds as strategic partners. The key element is building trust, something that was lacking over the past year. Following pressure from Korea and America, Abe had no choice but to accept Japan's responsibility for the sex slavery issue and open the door for negotiations. So his actions, the fact that he hadn't apologized himself, for instance, have failed to convince Korea that Japan is genuinely contrite in the spirit of the agreement. Had the leaders of both governments been more genuine and engaged with the public, we might not be where we are today. If the next Korean president reassures Japan that he or she will actively persuade the public to back the agreement, 
I believe relations can be rebuilt on new trust. Meanwhile, the Japanese public seems tired of the diplomatic tensions. In fact, some people I spoke to were unaware of recent events. <laughs> While those aware of contentious issues may hold differences in opinion, they believe solutions lie above politicizing of relations. I am against the installation of the statue, so I think we need to find solutions through deeper diplomatic talks. We are neighbors, so it's vital we get along. For the younger generation, they get along well. It's just the politics that cause problems. I wasn't taught about Japan's wartime sex slavery at school. I don't think that's right. I think we Japanese and the Koreans should learn about each other's history and find solutions. Tourism between the two countries has continued to hit new highs. Some 2.3 million Japanese tourists visited Korea in 2016, an increase of 25% from the year before. The number continued to grow in January by 13% and 28% in February. The number of Koreans travelling to Japan has also increased more than 20% in January. We have to have psychological bindings, mutual trust, mutual coexistence. And I think uh, in order to create this kind of atmosphere, culture is the best way. And the economic, the exchanges of economic goods. While diplomatic ties may have sunk to new lows, interpersonal relationships between Korea and Japan seem livelier than ever. Perhaps the time is right for hard diplomacy to move past the politics and catch up with the times, in order to find workable solutions to long-standing issues of the past. Woo Seung, Arirang News, Tokyo.